Hi, so we're here in the theatre. Uh, what we thought we might do today is go through uh, the kind of instruments you might encounter when you come to theatre. And you need to know the names of these because I'm here with June Brown, who's uh, one of our theatre practitioners. And when I'm operating, I need to tell June what I need. She often just knows anyway, she can do what I need, which is a sign of a, sign of a good scrub nurse. But uh, it's important to know the names of things. And you need different names of different things. So we'll, we'll go through uh, the things just quickly and then I'll show you each of the instruments we'll talk about what they're used for. Uh, sponge holding forceps, you've got some nice, quite large round paddles on the end with some teeth. It's reasonably soft, you can use it uh, just as it is to retract the, uh, the gallbladder with in an, uh, in an open gallbladder, not that they're done very much anymore. And then the other thing that's mo more usually used for is um, to put a swab on a stick. So June's going to show us how we mount the swab. We've got a small Rentex swab here, catching it in the in between the sponge hole. I'm going to open it and then carefully wrap it round yeah. and secure it. And, and just then, tuck it in the other side. Yeah. Oops. Should be quite tight. Yeah. That's good. That's, and so what that does it's it's a. Uh, because we get down into cavities and, uh, and dab, we can retract with it nice and gently and soak up any little puddles of blood that are obscuring our view. And the important thing is there's not too much floppy bit on the end. So if you have that, that's the, the, the swab goes up to the end of the swab on a stick. But, uh, that's a very useful thing that we use a lot of the time. So, okay, so this is a, uh, one of the scalpel handles. Uh, the blades mount on here. You never hold the blade, you'll, you'll get a clip and slide it on over here. And you'll see when you, when you, when you look at a scalpel blade, it's got a, a long, hole in the middle of it that matches and clips on quite nicely onto this oblique little uh, ridge here and the scalpel handle has uh, is corrugated here so that it's uh, non-slip and when you hold it uh, you hold it like that to cut with so with your, between your finger uh, your index finger and your thumb uh, and then put your index finger over there and your other finger down behind to hold it so you don't hold it you don't hold it like a don't hold it like a pen, you hold it like this so that the blade is dragged along the skin like that and just one reasonably firm movement so no, no little cuts as they go along, one firm movement like that. Okay so next uh, these are called little wood retractors and again they've got that, that ratchet on like all these things have. Um, these are sharp at the end, that's really quite, ow, that's really quite sore. Uh, doing that and these for grabbing onto uh, hard bits of tissue like the rectus sheath and so if you're going in you put them on the rectus sheath and you can retract it and give you some give your uh, surgeon some good attraction and all, surge is all about uh, traction and counter traction so you pull one way the uh, surgeon pulls the other way and then it's much easier to see what the bit in between to dissect is because it puts the tissue under a slight bit of tension so don't use those in bowel or anything soft, don't think it might get damaged. Uh, that's for fascia only, they really are quite traumatic and sharp. So these are the smallest of the clips we've got on the tray. Again, these are curved, and these are a pair of curved mosquitoes. They might be called something different in your hospital, maybe named after somebody. Um, and these are really good for, going, for getting across small blood vessels. So if you're in the, in the mesentery, tree, you tend to put across two small blood vessels and then cut between them and the curving on the end helps you to get the suture underneath the tip of the, uh, of the clip so that you can tie behind it and then let it off quite easily. And, um, and just, just a point, when you are assisting, uh, when someone's trying to put, a, put the suture on, just, just gently lift up the tip just, just by doing that so that the person doing suturing can easily get the, get the, uh, the suture, the, um, the tie underneath. Or if you say, someone says to you, show me the tip, that's what they mean. Just hold it up a little bit like that without pulling it off the tissue. So just gently, so you can see that. So that's a, a curved mosquito. Slightly bigger and slightly more curved than a mosquito, doing a similar thing as a Sotel. Uh, I personally don't tend to use these very much, but they're, if you're going through larger blood vessels in the mesentery perhaps, but not the major named blood vessels. Variations on the theme, this one's called a Rochester, a Rochester Peen in this hospital, but I know it's called different things elsewhere. And again, it's slightly less curved than the Sotel, and so you might prefer this for different things and different access. And this one's really the workhorse of, uh, of the clip, certainly in uh, abdominal cardiovascular surgery, it's called the Roberts. 
and it's, it's quite long, so it will go down deeper holes, and it's got quite a long uh, pair of uh, jaws on the end with some teeth inside. And this is the, the thing used to go across uh, large name vessels, so the, the uh, Alia colic, the, the uh, inferior mesenteric artery, etc. And so you, you, you put that on, uh, put two, two of these on, cut between them, and then probably with large vessels transfix underneath. And again, it's curved so you can get the, the suture underneath quite easily to tie. Just a quick note on how to take these on and off. You'll see here that there's uh, a, little, a little ratchet uh, so that the thing stays together. So when you clip it together, you can see that there. When you clip it together, it clips together like that so it stays on. But obviously you can't just pull it apart like that, which is a good safety feature. So when you are taking it apart, you have to make sure that the ratchet goes down and out. So you have to push push the handles apart in an up and down motion. And you can get used to doing this quite quickly, but it's a little bit difficult at first. So when you're taking it off, someone has, has to take it off, you want to do it really nice and slowly in, con in a controlled fashion so there's no surprises for the person doing the suturing. But you push down with your thumb and then move apart. So pull up with your fingers, push away, with, away from you with your thumb and you'll see that it's just the clip, the ratchet comes apart like that. And all these clips have these ratchets on. So it's a good technique just to practice when you're starting to assist. Uh, we have on this tray these forceps here, which are really quite large, bulky forceps. These are called bonnies. Uh, see, these have got teeth on them, and this is for, for grasping tissue. And so what we use these for is for getting hold of the rectus sheath when we're, when we're closing the abdomen. So we'll, we'll get hold of the, of the rectus sheath in here, lift it up, and then be able to pass the, uh, the, mass, the mass closure needle or the lecture sheath closing needle through and then grab it again so you're not using your fingers to pass things through. So they're, they're called bonnies and they're again nice corrugated bits here to hold on to so you don't slip. Uh, the next, we've got a long pair of uh, debakey forceps here. These are um, quite atraumatic uh, forceps and used a lot when you do vascular surgery. Um, they've got a slightly uh, ridged um, gripping surface here and again something to hold on to here but they haven't you notice haven't got teeth on them again and if you're doing more delicate summer vascular surgery you can you can gently just hold the tissue with these you can never squeeze tissue too hard because it crushes it but you can lift it up with these without causing any particular trauma or retract things without causing any particular trauma so they're pretty useful uh, things these debakey forceps and they come in various lengths depending on how deep down you're operating okay now we have uh, a couple of pairs of forceps uh, named after Gillies, who's uh, another plastic surgeon, lots of these entrants are named after plastic surgeons. These ones have got uh, teeth on, a little bit longer than you often find on a tray, but they're very good when it comes to skin closure. The teeth held, help you hold up the skin and, um, and you can hold on to the skin, though you shouldn't, again, press too hard. And if you're doing it operating with a plastic surgeon, never squeeze the edge of the skin and get very upset. All right, so there are tooth gillies, and here the even finer work is a, is a plainer, uh, smaller version of that, but without teeth. And so they're, they're quite good for doing small uh, retraction and uh, delicate holding of tissue. These are the Makindo scissors, and these are the, really the workhorse of, of your dissection if you're not using diathermy. And you see they're gently curved towards the tip. They've got a round tip, so you can't really stick it too hard into anything, so that's a a safety measure there, a nice long handle. And when you hold all these instruments, the important thing is you put your uh, ring finger through that hole, your thumb through there, and your index finger over near towards the pivot. And that stabilizes it and stops those terrible wobbles you might get if you're holding it here. And your second finger just tucked in against the, against the finger guard there. And you tend to use these, you can, you can use them to dissect with. And when, you, when you're cutting, just use the very tips don't cut sutures with these. These are tissue dissecting scissors. If you use sutures, uh, if, you cut, if you use these to cut sutures, the uh, scrub nurse get very, very upset with you because it blunts them quite quickly. These are the suture scissors. These are uh, called straight Mayo scissors. And these are 
you know, like your average average scissor, and very good for cutting uh, sutures or anything else you need to cut, like a stone bag at the time. Um, again, put your finger on the on the pivot of the scissors here, and you just cut. And again, use the tip. Get used to using the tip, because if you're down a deep hole and you're using this bit, you can easily cut well past the bit you intend to cut and cut something you didn't intend to. So looking at some longer scissors now, these are called uh, Nelson scissors. They're uh, very much like the, uh, the other scissors we saw. We've got a, a long curved end, uh, which is rounded, and these are just do exactly the same job of dissecting and cutting tissue, uh, but uh, they're longer for access down deeper cavities. So this is a, the retractor you probably come across most often, uh, is a, a Lang and Beck retractor. Um, you can see he's got a, you'd hold it in your hand like this, and there's nice textured grip so it doesn't slip, and goes through tissue like this. So you, what you do is you hook the end of this under the tissue you want it to retract, retract and pull backwards. And so it pulls the tissue back very nicely. It's, it's rounded here, and so it's atraumatic to the tissue. You don't want to pull like mad, uh, you know, it's all just a little bit of, just in the angle slightly to pull it back and just gentle retraction will get you most place without too much force. So don't lean, don't swing off it, don't lean on it. Just pull it back like that. And that's for more superficial things. For slightly further inside, so a slightly uh, bigger patient getting into a wound. For slightly further inside, a slightly bigger patient getting into a wound. Uh, or perhaps in someone who's got a reasonably slim abdomen, these are called Morit attractors. And you see they're very similar to the Lang and Beck. Uh, slightly smoother grip, uh, texture down the side to hold onto this time. And again with a lip to get underneath the tissue uh, and pull it, pull it backwards. And that gives you really very effective uh, retraction. Um, sorry about the noise, we're, we're, get, we're prepping for the next case which involves opening a lot of things. Which, uh, noisy. We're getting into, uh, into deeper wounds. There's these two things here called divas. You can see it's a narrow one and a wider one. And again, they've got these, this uh, round edge here, uh, which means it's not going to dig sharply into anything and very curved. So you can get underneath things. So where these used to be used a lot uh, was in uh, an open gallbladder operation where you put this over, over the costal margin and then gently pull the liver back we need to be careful with things like the liver is not to dig the end of this in because it can easily cause trauma to the liver. So that will go in there and just gently pull back. If you've got a larger patient in the abdomen, these can be quite useful. In most of our patients in having abdominal surgery, colorectal uh, cancer in open surgery, they tend to use these, one of these retractors. Uh, they're, again, rounded to uh, prevent trauma. They all have quite sharp edges, so you need to be careful with the edge and don't dig it into anything soft like a liver or a spleen. And again, a little bit of grip on the handles and these are even deeper. And, uh, and these, these are called uh, Kelly retractors. And these are what I do most of the retracting with uh, when I do open colorectal surgery. And then there's two suckers on here. So uh, this is a, the sucker that you use. The suction tubing goes, clips onto the end here, and you just hold it into the wound and, and suck. Uh, if, you've got, if you're sucking up a puddle of something, say down in the pelvis, uh, then you'd uh, put a sucker in like that and it would just suck a, a pool of tissue up. If you want to uh, be more specific in a very small area, uh, to, to suck out, so you've got you need some suturing, you just want to clear a bit of blood from a small area, then you ask for the guard off, and you see in the end there's a small hole in the end of the sucker and a little hole around the side as well, and this is where the, the suction happens, so that's for more targeted suction. However, that can get blocked easily, you can get a little bit of tissue sucked into that and the sucker blocks, so the guard uh, is to to help prevent the sucker blocking when you're sucking down in deep cavities. These are called uh, Babcock's uh, 
forceps. And you can see at the end, they have this very soft, smooth surface. That's not hurting at all. They're quite soft, pliable uh, tissues and don't cause much in the way of uh, trauma to the tissues. Um, and there you can hold on to softer tissue, so you could hold on to a bit of gallbladder with that, and particularly just holding on to bowel to hold it up when you're doing a, a hand sewn anastomosis or you're holding it steady to put the staplers down the loom. So again, this is a needle holder. Uh, it's got these gold handles, uh, which they often have the higher quality ones. And they've got quite small jaws on the end, and you put the needle in there. Um, some people, so some people put the ratchet on to hold the needle, but if you just hold it together, you can keep the needle just held nicely. And it's really important to have your hand in the position I showed you, ring finger, thumb, second finger tucked in there, and then finger on top to guide. And when, you, when you're putting a needle in there, the needles are curved, obviously. And so you want to, rather than lever it in like this, what you want to do is just get the needle perpendicular to the skin and then just rotate your forearm at, uh, at the elbow in a supinating motion to get the needle to go through. So no pushing. It's all supination. If you want to see more of that, have a look at our video on how to suture, uh, which, uh, which shows you how to do that properly. Okay, so that's the uh, large basic tray, uh, the one you encounter most. Uh, you can find uh, much more like this and about many other things to do with surgery at uh, School of Surgery, on Podomatic, on YouTube or on iTunes. Thanks for watching. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.